بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد عيا الحبة في الله. Continuing on our study of the difference between advising and condemning by Hafiz ibn Rajab, rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasiya. We left off talking about the importance of adhering to the haq and ta'zim of the haq wa izharihi. Meaning that it's imperative that when we are refuting and when we're criticizing and when we are praising, whatever the case may be, that our intention is to make the truth be known. So when we speak about individuals, individuals from Ahl Sunnah or individuals from Ahl Bidah, both, that our purpose and intention is to spread the truth. It's not to belittle. It's not to destroy. Although if someone is from Ahl Bidah and they're spreading Bidah in innovation, your, in, your nafs, of course, are going to be inclined. You want to destroy their falsehood. So destroying their falsehood, this is not a negative thing because you're destroying what? Falsehood. You're destroying that which opposes Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I hope that's clear. But the most important thing is that you realize that this is a way and this is the means Allah preserved this religion by refuting newly invented matters, those things that were mistakes that were added to the religion or the mistakes of individuals. And we talked about different types of mistakes and of course throughout the treaties we'll continue to do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجِدُ فِيهِ اخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and if it, the Quran, were from someone other than Allah they would have found many contradictions in it. And what is more profound than this is his saying, no one ever debated me except that I noticed either the truth was manifested on his tongue or on my tongue. And this is the statement of Imam Shafi'i, I believe. Allah yarhamahum. This indicates that his intention was for nothing else but to manifest the truth. Even if it were found on the tongue of someone other than him, such as those who debated or differed with him. Again, this illustrates for us the importance of ta'zim al-haq wa idharihi, that it is imperative that we give precedence to the haq, give precedence to the truth, even if it goes against us, that the truth is more beloved to us than our own selves. And that's the sifat of the mu'min, and that's the sifat of Ahl sunnah is that they speak the truth, even if it goes against what they are, uh, a mistake that they have made. And this is what is imperative. So when we refute people, when we refute people, whether it's from Ahl Sunnah or Ahl Bidah, that it is imperative that we do so for Ta'zim al Haq in order to make clear the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion, not to belittle the other people or to make ourselves seem bigger. So this is Im imperative that we go back to the intention, which is from the Qawaid al deen as the Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna The Prophet Sallallahu said, Verily actions are tied to the intentions, and everyone should get that for which he intended. So letting us know that our intention must be sahih, and must be to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and give the, uh, give the, give the truth, uh, make precedence, give the truth precedence over uh, our desires. And then Imam Hafiz said, whoever possesses this type of condition, then indeed he will not hate having his opinion rejected, nor having his contradiction of the sunnah clarified, whether during his lifetime or after his death. So this is a sifat of Ahl Sunnah with regards to akhta and da'wah. This is the characteristic of Ahl Sunnah with regards to mistakes and with regards to da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the way of the scholars of Islam from past and present. Those who are the protectors of it and who rise to support it used to think about others. They would also not detest the opposition they received from those that contradicted them with a proof 
that was made known to them. So letting us know that when someone came with a, a dilla, which contradicted what they were upon or the, the issue that they were discussing at hand, they didn't reject that. They didn't say, no, no, I'm not going to accept it because that person came with adilla. If the person comes with adilla from Kitab or Sunnah, not just fatawa, not just uh, statements and opinions, but rather they come with a, a proof from the Quran and the Sunnah, then we, we have to accept that. We have to at least acknowledge that. And then it opens up the area for discussion. And that is showing love for the truth, not love for our opinions and uh Viewpoints. This was even if the proof that these individuals who opposed them used was not strong according to them, such that they would accept it and abandon their proof in place of it. So this is also the case, as he says, that even if they saw the proof from someone who was refuting them to not be as strong, they still, uh, they still would accept it and abandon their proof in place of it. So letting us know that's tawah there. That's the humbleness of the salaf. But look how far we are from that. Allah understand. We can't even, if someone refutes us or points out a mistake, we begin to curse them. We talk about their nationality. We talk about their, their characteristics, their, uh, their father's lineage, everything. We go almost literally, we lose our minds because we don't know how to deal with ikhtilaf and differences of, and, and viewpoints. Then he said, this is why Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala would mention Ishaq ibn Rahawi rahimahullah while praising and commending him. And he would say, even if he does contradict me with, uh, with regards to the sunnah in some matters, then indeed the people will never cease to differ with one another or as it was said. So this shows us, look at Imam Ahl Sunnah, Imam Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala, how humble he was and how he dealt with differences with regards to those people who differed with him. And many times he, rahimahullah ta'ala, was presented with the words of Ishaq and other imams and their sources from where they derived their opinions. And he would not agree with them in their opinion, nor would he reject their views or their evidences for it, even though he would not agree with any of that. So again, he didn't have to... Uh, you know, begin to defend himself, but he went with what he thought was the truth. And again, this is taking precedence with the truth, and this shows us how to differ, that it's not always necessary that you have to go on the defensive and you have to attack and you have to reject the haq when it comes to you, but rather, you're, it's all about ta'zim al-haq. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala approved of what was related from Hatim al-Asim, when it was said to him, you are a non-Arab and do not speak eloquently, yet no one debates you except that you silence him. So with what do you gain victory over your opponents? So he responded, by three things. I become happy when my opponent speaks correctly on a point. I become grieved when he errs. And I withhold my tongue from him, lest I should say something that would harm him or something with this meaning. So Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala said, how wise of a man he is. Look at this. This is, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful narration from our Salaf showing us that the, hum, the humility and how to deal with the differences. Therefore, refuting weak, erroneous opinions and clarifying the truth with regard to what opposes it, based upon sound evidences, is not from what these scholars detested. Rather, it was from that which they loved and for which they commended and praised those who did it. So it does not enter into the realm of backbiting at all. But suppose there is someone that hates to have his error, which contradicts the sunnah exposed. In this case, there is no consideration given to his hatred for that, because hating to manifest the truth, if it is in opposition to the opinion of a man, is not from those matters that are praiseworthy. So here, Imam... Uh, Hafiz ibn Rajib rahimahullah ta'ala is giving, giving us a, a qa'ida, a qa'ida to, to practice, a principle from the religion to let us know that the truth again takes precedence over, over men's opinion. And likewise, that even if someone detests that you speak about some mistake they've made, it may become necessary because of their severe contradiction of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in this issue, 
and their persistence upon it that you have to. And you may have to speak about, uh, make it known about that particular individual. For example, as is well known about some of the statements I've said about uh, uh, the one who makes tat wheel and talks about the, U, uh, the new world order so much, he uses hadith to uh, illustrate his views on the new world order. The dollar is the Dijal and things like this. Uh, I forget his name, but anyhow, I spoke about this individual. Why? Because his dawah is widespread. His mistakes are well known and widespread. And many people adhere to that. So it's imperative naming the individual by name and his mistakes and hope that he will correct it and in hope that people will have the truth clarified for them. And this is what we adhere to. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.